Hi guys, and in this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can expose as well as color grade your Panasonic Lumix V-Log footage inside Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna start right now. So firstly, what is V-Log? Well, V-Log is Panasonic Lumix Log Profile, and it gives you many benefits over shooting in the standard profile. Firstly, it's a flatter, less saturated image, so it allows you to color grade in post-production with a little bit more creativity, as well as it offers a greater dynamic range. I'm shooting today on the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, and it offers up to 14 stops of dynamic range, but only when shooting in V-Log. But it isn't just as simple as turning on V-Log in camera. There are a few setting changes that you need to take into consideration when shooting in V-Log. The first one is your base ISO. Now, the base Base ISO of the standard color profile or vivid color profile is ISO 100, but when shooting in log, that does change. And for V-Log, you wanna be shooting at 640 to get the cleanest image with the best amount or the greatest amount of dynamic range. But with the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II and other Lumix cameras, you've actually got a dual-based sensor, which means you've actually got a clean image at 640 as well as 4,000. So if you are shooting in a low light environment and you do wanna get the least amount of noise with the greatest amount of dynamic range, either shoot at 640 or ISO 4000. You can shoot in between, just bear in mind that you will get a little bit more noise. The other thing you need to bear in mind when shooting in log is your exposure. Unlike standard, vivid and other color profiles, you wanna get basically the correct exposure. You wanna slightly overexpose when it comes to log profiles and V-Log is no exception. You wanna expose, I find one to two stops over to get the best results when it comes to noise in the shadows as well as retrieving information in the highlights. Again, you're shooting with a larger dynamic range, so you could be a little bit more flexible, but I do recommend one to two stops over in most situations. But again, it really depends on the type of camera you're using as well as how you like editing in log. So they're the, my two recommendations. Do bear in mind about your base ISO and I'd slightly overexpose one to two stops to get the best results. But let's go ahead and jump onto Premiere Pro and go ahead and edit vlog footage. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just simply go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. So to speed up this uh, tutorial a little bit, what I've done is I've already made a timeline and I've placed four different clips, all shot on the Lumix S5 II in vlog. So we've got clip one, you can see here, then we've got clip two, and then clip three was filmed inside a car, so it's a little bit darker because we are filming through tinted windows. And the last one we've got is clip four. Now, as you can see, all of them are quite undersaturated and also very flat. And you'll be able to see that with the Lumetri scope, which we'll have a look on in a second. So the first thing you wanna do is obviously drag your clips onto the timeline. Then what I recommend doing is go over to the right-hand side in your editing panel, and you can see you've got Lumetri color. What we'll do is go ahead and open up that. And this is where you've got all of your color corrections. You've got your basic corrections, creative curves, and so on, all the way down to vignette. What we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and open up basic correction. Inside here, you've got color and you've got light. And this is where we can control predominantly our white balance, but also our exposure. Now, obviously we can grade just from looking at the graph here, or just looking at the screen, but it's not an accurate representation of the exact color and also brightness of the photo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our Lumetri scope. So we're gonna do, once we've got our Lumetri color open, we're gonna go over to where you can see it says effects controls, or you can go up to window, and you want to go ahead and find Lumetri scope. And it should look something like this. Basically a bunch of squiggly lines and you've got some color bars. What this does, basically it displays your three primary color channels, so red, green and blue against a brightness chart. So it's like um, a histogram that displays all colors really. And at the bottom here, you've got zero. And then at the top here, you've got 100. And on the right hand side, you've got zero to 255. And basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is expanded as much as possible. Now, what you don't want is to have any clipping information. And I think I mentioned it previously, basically clipping is when there's no information in the highlights or no information in the shadows, where basically your information is just 100% white and there's no way of retrieving any information within those pixels. And that is at 100%, which is pure white, and zero, which is 100% black. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna hover over our clip that we want to edit. 
Then what you want to do is with our Lumetri scope open, we want to go over to our color first. Now, what's quite nice with shooting in Norway is everything is white. There's a lot of snow. So we can use that as our white balance or our gray card. But if you don't have that, what I recommend doing, can you see these three lines appearing? That is obviously the whiteness of the sky. What you want is all three, your blue channel, green channel, and red channel to line up. And that is what's gonna make pure white. So we can do that by going to our temperature and tint, which controls our white balance, and we can move that around. And as you can see, if we move it further to the blue, the blue becomes more stronger and brighter. So you can see it rises up on our lumetri scope. But if we move it the other way, the band become closer and as you can see the white balance looks a lot more consistent or looks correct so you can see we can move that around so I think around 20% increase there and then we could try moving the tint around as well as you can see if I do that everything becomes a bit more magenta and magenta moves up in our lumetri scope there and then if we get them all lined up perfectly so I would say that is correct when you've got to your white balance so now let's go ahead and expand it by just basically going to our exposure here bringing it up a little bit then you can go to your contrast here as well. You can see we're starting to stretch that out a little bit. What I'd probably do is bring up the highlights a little bit, but then what we're gonna do is go to the shadows and we can really bring those shadows down. And as you can see, we're expanding the amount of information within our Lumetri scope there. So I would look at your screen, making sure you're liking what you're doing as well as your Lumetri scope. So you really wanna kind of make sure, firstly judging if you like what we're doing, but also making sure it's correct in our Lumetri scope there. And we can raise up our highlights a little bit and then we can bring down those blacks. Now it doesn't have to match it up perfectly, but again, you wanna kind of make it look like so it is right. Again, white is very, snow is very white. So you obviously don't wanna make it look too dark. You don't wanna make it look gray because we all know that snow isn't gray. So again, it is a little bit of a creative input has to go in it as well. So I might go for something that looks similar to this. Okay, so then once you've done one clip, you move on to the second clip. Now this clip, Clip one and clip two were shot basically almost at the same time. So what we can do is actually have a little cheat code and we can copy and paste the information from clip one onto clip two and it's a far quicker way of working. To do this, go over to clip one, go to your effects controls and you can see a new one has opened up called Lumetri Color. Inside this, what you wanna do is right click on that and you want to go to copy. We're gonna copy that Lumetri Color. We're gonna move it over to shot two what we're going to do is then right click on that and we're going to go ahead and paste. And as you can see, all that information has been pasted from clip one to clip two. That doesn't mean it's correct. It just means that basically if you're shot in a very similar lighting condition, you're basically just copying all that information onto the other. A bit like copying and pasting in Lightroom Classic if you've ever edited photos. What you might want to do is brighten this one up a little bit more. And then you might want to affect the white balance just a little bit. So I might make it a little bit more blue. Again, looking at our Lumetri scope. Again, cheat code, obviously we are using snow in this example. You could just use your white balance and just click onto there, making sure you are selecting on something gray. But again, if you don't have that, I'd always refer to your Lumetri scope. So you can see one and two are now looking really good. So let's move on to shot three, which is a little bit darker. So what we're gonna do is go back to my effects controls, right click, and paste our Lumetri scope settings. But as you can see, it hasn't worked in this example. So what we can do is either press reset or you can just adjust it from there. I might just adjust it. So I might bring up the shadows a little bit, might bring up those highlights, might bring down those blacks to make sure that we aren't making anything gray and go for a shot, I think. Maybe bring these down a little bit, bring it up a little bit more. Now I'm thinking this one is quite undersaturated. So what I can do is go to the saturation slider here and actually increase that like so. I'm gonna probably go for about 130 here. So I'm gonna go 130%. Now we increase the amount of saturation. Again, it is quite a flat image, but there is a nice bright red kind of barn, I think it is. So we can go and really bring that out. Again, always referring back to your Lumetri scope, making sure you're looking at it. Again, judging it accordingly, I think it is still a little bit too warm. So I might adjust it, 
I'm gonna go for a little bit less, so I'd probably go for 15. And let's have a look at our tint here. So go for something like so. I think that is looking quite good. Again, it is a little bit too dark still, uh, but I actually I like going for that shot again. We did shoot inside a car, so we are shooting through the window. So I kind of want to replicate that in uh, post. And then the last one we've got is this shot here, which is a little bit too dark and very compressed. You can see there's very little dynamic range in this shot. So we'll probably bring that up to around 70% uh, brightness here. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, increase the contrast bring up the whites, bring down those blacks, bring up those whites there, bring down the shadows, go for something like this. Now there's quite a nice warm tone coming through. So what I might do is go to that saturation there and increase the saturation to around about 130. Now again, the white balance is off as we can see by the three separate lines. So we'll go to our uh, temperature here and try and bring that closer together. And I think something like that would work quite nicely. We add a little bit more blue in it because again, there is a lot of snow and snow is a little bit more cooler than I would say it is warm. So I'll probably go for about 12% there. Now you could be done with this uh, and you'd actually be quite happy, but all we've done is basically brought our vlog footage back to what we call Rec 709 or true to life. If you want to color grade it further, we can do so. To do this, what I recommend doing is going over, I've already made it, but I'll show you how to make it. Go down to this new, new item icon. Then you want to do is go ahead to your adjustment layer. Inside adjustment layer, you want to make a new adjustment layer and call it color grading. So what we're gonna do is click and drag that over to our timeline. And you should have a new layer appear. And what we're gonna do is drag that over all of our clips like so. Now what this will do is act as our main color grading LUT, our lookup table. Now what we've done at the moment is just brought all of them back to Rec 709. So all of them match match brightness, but also match color. Because what we don't wanna do is have everything kind of higgledy piggledy and all over the place, drag a lot over it, and it just isn't gonna look consistent. The important thing is to make sure everything is consistent before you apply your LUT. So what I'm gonna do is make sure our color grading is covering all of our lines, go out of basic correction and go down to creative. Now inside creative, this is where you can add in your LUTs. Now if you go to here to look, you can see you've got a bunch of free ones available which is nice, but what I recommend doing is either making your own or downloading one. If you wanna use the same one that I'm using in this tutorial, go to the link in the description. I am offering it for free for everyone that watches this video. If you go ahead, click browse, this is where you can download them or this is where you can import them. So I've got all of these ones. These are my main ones that I use. I'm gonna go ahead and use coolblues.cube. Again, if you wanna use the same one I'm using, make sure to go ahead and download it and go ahead and click open. Now, as you can see, this is far too strong. And if we have a look on other clips, it might work for one clip or this clip here, but it certainly doesn't work for the last two clips, especially the last one. So what we can do is once you've activated it, go to your intensity here and you can actually reduce that intensity. And I like dropping my LUTs down to between 50% to 75%. Sometimes I use 100% strength, but in most situations I find it is too strong and too intense, so I'd recommend around 50%. You can also affect the vibrance, saturation, sharpness, and film grain, or faded film here, all from this creative look, as well as shadow tint and also highlight tint. And as you can see, this is now all color graded and it's actually really easy. This is why I recommend filming in a log profile in general. You've got so much more to play with. You could be really creative with the colors that you add and the colors that you subtract. You wouldn't be able to do this if you had a standard color profile, for example. So yeah, so yeah it is super easy to edit log footage and this is how you can specifically edit the log footage from your Panasonic camera. And what I'll do is I'll leave you with a couple of shots that I took in Norway using the Panasonic S5 Mark II to really show you what this camera can do and how well you can color grade vlog footage using the LUT provided in the link in the description.